Smartsheet is an online application that houses basically online spreadsheets that can be automated and then can also be tracked using a dashboard feature. It's basically like if you took Excel and Power Automate and threw it into an online platform that is kind of easily usable by other people who are non-technical. In this video, I wanna go over the basics of Smartsheet and then I wanna dive into what I believe is its best feature, which is its automation feature. And then finally go over some other applications, why you would use this one over others and stuff like that. If you're new here, my name is Liz. I'm a data science manager at Intel, but on the side, I like to review software tools in an effort to make my life easier. So if you're into that, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump into it. So this is what Smartsheet looks like when you first sign up. It will have you go through a tutorial where you kind of create a list and it's a little bit confusing, but I think it's worth it to get to this view. So just go through it, try to pick a spreadsheet. I did like a client task spreadsheet. Um, nothing crazy, but go in here and this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have this workspaces. So I'm in the documents or browse section, and then it's going to give you a bunch of different views based on your inputs. So I have a client task sheet, which is basically like a uh, spreadsheet. And then I have a couple reports, which don't worry about those yet because I don't find them that useful, but we'll go over them. And then finally a project dashboard, which I do feel like is kind of cool. It's got a couple widgets in there that kind of make, makes it intriguing, um, especially if you were to make this in another software application, that would have been kind of a pain to set up, but Smartsheet makes it pretty easy. So in this view, you have a create section. So you can create a bunch of different types of sheets or data. You could do a grid view, task list, project, cards. Cards is basically like a Kanban board. So if you're used to that kind of view, you can do it in here. Um, there's tons of templates, which I will show you because it's actually kind of a cool feature. And then you can import from a couple different places. Uh, Microsoft Excel is probably your most commonly used one. But if you wanted to look at templates, uh, they actually have some really cool stuff depending on what you're in. So if you're in like product development, you could do agile backlog. I mean, what's cool is they give you tons of examples of what you can use it with. Um, and depending on where you're at. So if you're in IT, maybe you can do, you know, an IT request management tracker and stuff like that. So I do kind of like the templates. Um, I just did a basic task list. So let's take a look at that. So that's like if you were to go in here and click grid. So this is a grid. You can look in here and see it looks like basically an Excel spreadsheet. Um, you have these options here, right? Attachments, all kinds of stuff here. There's a lot going on here and there's a lot going on in the ribbon. So you can also share this as well. But I just did my two companies that I was kind of working with. Um, I just added some tasks, right? And then you can kind of put in in progress um, and customize this as well. So you can do in progress or not started or, or whatever it may be. Um, so again, it's gonna look just like a grid view. The other cool part is you can actually change the view right here, grid view. Gantt chart, you could do a card view. So this is what it looks like on like a Kanban kind of card. So they, the steps move from left to right. Kind of drives me nuts when you see like Kanban board and they're segregated in the columns by project type or something that doesn't make sense. If it's a Kanban board, it needs to be by status, right? It needs to be not started in progress complete and it should move from left to right. So if you have a board, that separates them and it doesn't move left to right. It's not actually a Kanban board. So just a thing that I hate, pet peeve of mine. Um, there's also a calendar view. The thing that holds me a little bit back on this is how ugly it looks. I feel horrible saying it, but like, look at this. This looks like the 2000s. Like, look at this. What is this? I just, I'm not a fan of some of the views. I'm like, this looks so ugly. I mean, I, it's powerful, I'll give it that, but I'm not impressed by the styling of the website, but um, it doesn't matter because we're using this for functionality reasons. So you have this. What I find the coolest features here is this automation and form section. So the automation's cool because it's basically like if you're used to Power Automate or Zapier or any automation tool that you've used, you can create a workflow. Um, that's what they're calling it. Those are called flows in Power Automate or Zaps in Zapier. So you can click create a workflow from a template. So you can request an update every week or, you know, alert a team's channel when a criteria is met. And there's like so many templates, which I find fascinating. 
and then it tells you exactly how to use this. So you can press use template. You could say every week on Monday, starting at one o'clock, um, when this is assigned to, let's say me, request an update, send to specific people, and then you can put my name in there. You can customize a message and say, save. And then how you get back to this, because it kind of takes you to a new page. If you go back to the client list, you press automation, manage workflows, it takes you here. And then this will be all your workflows. And then you can go in, edit them, run now, delete, whatever, deactivate. So that's like if you just wanna turn it off, but you don't wanna delete the workflow. Um, I probably should have titled that one, but it's kind of cool because now you can have like an automation built into your spreadsheet. The other thing is forms, right? So we looked at automations. Forms is cool. You can create a form here and it basically acts as something somebody can fill out. So it kind of cleans the data. So if you're working with somebody who's non-technical and you don't really want to send them a spreadsheet because you're worried they're going to mess things up, you can create what's called a form and say, hey, like enter your information in here and then you can pull that information into your spreadsheet. So that way they are messing up your stuff. So you can share it, um, it's active, you can change the settings, all kinds of stuff you can do with forms as well. And then you can move them into your automations. Now if we go back to the home page, um, you do see some reports here. So there are some reporting stuff that you can do. I'm not a big fan of the report style. I think it looks ugly and I don't really understand the purpose other than filtering your uh, spreadsheet for you. But maybe you can filter it for a certain view for somebody if they want to see it that way. There's also what's called um, dashboards as well. So these are kind of cool. I think they're a little limited, but uh, I mean, they come naturally with the grid view. So you can kind of see your project percent complete. Here's some links, statuses. It's kind of nice. You could build this with Power BI, but it's kind of nice that it's automatically built and you don't have to do anything. So I do like that as well. Um, but again, you can see all the things that you can create. You can just do a drop down. That's the reports is the orange and then the dashboard slash portal is your actual project dashboard for your spreadsheet. Now I do want to touch on some competitors of Smartsheet. So you're kind of seeing Smartsheet's really nice. It's got the kind of, ex um, not Excel, but spreadsheet view, automations, forms. It's kind of doing a lot of different things. Now, the first competitor would be to just use Excel and Power Automate, maybe Power Apps in order to do the form side of things. So if we look at Excel right here, I have just like an Excel spreadsheet, whatever. You can actually connect that to your actual um, Power Automate workflow. So again, you can go in here and if you're not familiar with Power Automate, this is gonna be confusing, but it's kind of a feature off of a Microsoft application. So if you have, or you're in a Microsoft platform, you get it for free. Um, you have to pay extra for premium apps, whatever. But you can do the same stuff that Smartsheet was doing where they're like, update a row, you know, get a worksheet, um, add a column, whatever you want. So you can do like Excel, you could do Microsoft Excel as an add-in or whatever. And then you have to sign in, right, through your Microsoft account. And you could do find the location, right, for off of a SharePoint site or whatever, and then fill out this information and then update something else. So you can add, you can even send this to any application of your choice. Um, if you wanted to update this or have it email, so you could do Outlook. So some of that stuff was like email me a file or whatever. So if I do Outlook, right, I could say, you know what, when you update this row, send an email, delete an event, delete an email. There, I mean, there's literally hundreds of options. So I find this a little bit more helpful because you can also do stuff that's outside Microsoft as well. So I could even do this for, Smartsheet actually has a plugin in, in Microsoft Power Automate. So you could do insert a row, get columns of sheets. So you can actually, send this information to a lot of different um, platforms or SharePoint, for ex example, like let's say you want to upload it or copy the file or whatever you want to do. There's so many connectors built into Power Automate that I find it a little bit more customizable than Smartsheet, but 
smart sheet is more get it done quickly, right? Get it done quickly. This is more developer heavy, like not everybody is gonna be able to find this super intuitive where Smartsheet was a little bit more intuitive than, you know, using a low code developer tool in the background. Another competitor would be using something like QuickBase. It's almost identical in the sense that it's a spreadsheet that is able to have automations built into it. So you can see right here, project management, you know, resource management, all that. This is, you know, QuickBase. Um, I don't have an example, but it's something that I see used a lot. So on one hand, I see a lot of people using QuickBase where they have pipelines and cool automations. And then other times I see people using Smartsheet, which has automations in the background. And then other times I see Excel spreadsheets using Microsoft Power Automate and Power BI to kind of wrap it all together. So it kind of depends what exactly you're trying to do at the time. Okay, so we talked a lot about different software applications and you're probably like, oh my gosh, that is too much. You talked about QuickBase, you talked about Smartsheet, you talked about Excel, then you talked about this automation tool, all that kind of stuff. If I were to summarize it, if you are working on a team that has members that are non-technical, right, and you wanna get something up and running quickly, then I would suggest using Smartsheet or QuickBase an online application that has that automation built in on the website because the, the, the main part is the fact that they're non-technical because you're wanting to send them forms for them to fill out information easily, blah, blah. To build that all on a Microsoft platform using Power Apps, Power Automate and Excel would take a lot of work and wrapping that with Power BI would take a lot of work, but it might be better in the long run because you're on a Microsoft application platform. However, if you need to get up and running fast, Smartsheet's great. Set it all up, send some forms, add some automations, and you can have a pretty fast and user-friendly tool up in a matter of a few hours. So I will say that's the advantage of using Smartsheet. But if your team is super technical, so you're on a data team, they know all the applications, they love learning, blah, blah, blah. I would not use Smartsheet. I would only use it if there were users that could mess things up. So like my business partner, Max and I are both very data centric people. We would never use a smart sheet. I just would never use it because I trust him to input the data correctly. And I trust him to do all kinds of cool stuff with it where I wouldn't want to use a, a smart sheet that kind of restricts me down to kind of use the software. It doesn't have as much custom, customizable stuff. I think there are stuff where you can add APIs and stuff, but I just would not use an online application. It just, it just feels clunky unless there's an exact reason why I'm using it as if you need it. It's a big team and there's lots of users who are non-technical. One thing to be very um, conscious of when you force people to use an application like this is that your advanced users will have to lower their ability in order to use this product. So what I mean by that is in here, um, I can navigate around without using a mouse a little bit and I can memorize a couple hotkeys, but for me as being advanced at Excel, I can go up and navigate around control shift N, unfilter, refilter, right? I can go in here, do all, you could do um, alt down, use these hotkeys to jump around and add things if you want, and then filter whatever you want, right? I wanna unfilter, I do an Alt AC, bam, I can move around. If I wanna go anywhere, I press Alt, and I use these keys up here for A for data, and you start navigating that way. So anyone who has advanced hotkeys and can navigate really fast, if you force them to use an application like Smartsheet, they'll memorize some of the, the hotkeys, but it just, they'll never work as quickly. So if you have a team full of advanced Excel users, forcing them to use this will lower their capabilities, but the, the non-technical users, it will move them up slightly and then they'll meet in the middle. So it's almost like it brings everyone to an average, which is nice sometimes, but your advanced users, you will absolutely cripple their productivity and then they may get frustrated. That's at least my experience when people force me to use like a smart sheet or a quick base. But if I'm the admin and I made it and I'm the only advanced user, 
that's a different story. Then I don't mind, because <laughs> I created it, right? Like, but forcing everyone who's super good at Excel to use a Smartsheet um, just for some quick automations that you can build in Power Automate, not going to recommend that necessarily. So just keep that in mind when you kind of are navigating or migrating onto different applications that uh, there are advanced users who will not like it. <laughs> now, if you're interested in seeing other software tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis or review, or you should stay up to date, I will link a couple up here. I do want to show you Zapier, so I will link that one up here. It's an automation tool, very similar to Power Automate, so feel free to check that out. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.